from 1968 and number 56 in the Masters of Cinema series is Kuroneko, another horror themed Masters of Cinema title that I've been often looking at and it's took me a long while to get to. And again, it's another one where I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting to it sooner. I like a lot of Kuroneko. I think it's a very uh, unusual movie, but one that tackles a almost familiar story with very different traits that I really appreciated. It has a really stark opening as we see this small house at the edge of a grassland as this group of soldiers just stumble across it. They burst into the place, they start stealing the food. There's two women there, a mother and a daughter-in-law who are just terrified of what's going on. And these guys are just animals. They eat all the food and they rape the women, leaving them for dead, burning the shack down. That's the opening of the movie. It's bleak, it's dark, it's horrific. And instantly, got me curious about where this movie was going. As the bodies lay there smouldering in the fire, some cats come round and they start to come back to life. We jump to these women now living within a bamboo forest who have somehow turned into vampiric cat-like monsters who could be ghosts. It's a little bit ambivalent about what it, it wants to stick to what the rules are of this story but these women seemingly have made a pact with the the, the the devil or hell itself and have come back from the dead to feed on the blood of samurai that stumble across their path <laughs> It's really interestingly shot and one of the best things about this one is along with the stark images, uh, the shots of bamboo, the forest at night, uh, these women who look uh, diminutive, demure, who suddenly turn into animalistic crazed killers at certain moments once they've lured their prey to, to the location and, and dulled their senses and, and let them let down their guard. Um, it has this wonderful soundtrack that's kind of drums are probably um, traditional uh, music instruments of, of Japan that just has this really nice authentic feeling to it. This kind of drum um, along with the sound of the wind and some other chimes that are in amongst there just creates this ghostly otherworldly take to the movie that I really liked. And where the kind of crux of the film comes in is we have this man that uh, kind of rules this area, he's a general and he knows that his soldiers are being killed, his samurai, and he needs to stop that. He needs to secure his area to show his strength and his ability in making sure that his uh, army, his people, and everyone knows that they are safe and secure there. So we get the introduction to a man, a man who uh, in a vicious fight sequence luckily manages to survive um, and creates his own mythos and he is promoted and charged with killing these supernatural creatures. And in a twist of fate, and it's not spoiling the movie because it comes on early on, uh, it turns out that this man happens to be the son and the husband to the two women murdered at the start, the two vengeful spirits. And rather than being a good versus evil, a, a man against these spirits, it becomes a man dealing with grief, dealing with the trauma of what happened to his family. It comes with vengeful spirits who are emotion filled, who are grief filled, who have this pledge to kill samurai, who are reunited 
with their son and husband who also happens to be a samurai who they must kill as well. And it, it tackles that subject in a very different manner, one I wasn't really expecting and I really enjoyed. And it kind of has these really fun sequences all the way through it. You know, for a little while it becomes a reconnection between a husband and wife. It becomes a, a sort of disconnect between a mother and a son as they both have uh, different goals and they're conflicting and you know it's going to come to a head at some point. And it does come to a, a wonderful finale in this one, a surprising finale as well, which I, I really was a little bit um, off-put when I first saw it, but I, it grew on me the more I think about it. Kuroneko is a really fun horror movie. It has this kind of stillness, this lethargy about the way some of the shots are set up. Not to say that it's slow, it most definitely is not. It is a quick, fun movie, just about 100 minutes, but it's, it's interesting the way it's shot. I love the sort of bamboo forest. I love to see the women leading their victims along a path. Just even simple things like just jumping over a puddle which happens, muddle or a ditch, a hole in the ground. It happens multiple times in the movie. It, it, it's a kind of fun little addition to the movie. The clothing, the music, the way that it's shot is fantastic. The twisted uh, battle scenes at the end between the mother and the son are really energetic and fun and twisted. And it just creates this wonderful mood and atmosphere that I, I just reveled in. I loved, I was curious to, as to where the story was going and I really did like where it went. Mostly. The ending is growing on me more and more the more I think about it. Another winner from the Masters of Cinema, another fantastic film, another one that I'd love to know your thoughts on uh, if you've seen it. Of course, there's more videos up here that you can check out of mine. I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a like, if you think I deserve it, and maybe um, share it, which would help get my content out there a little bit more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can join the membership programme or the Patreon program if you want to really support me, and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.